Hey everyone, Jin Dobre. I am Gursha Ranjit Kaur. I am a PhD student working with Machik and Anjita. So today uh, I'll be talking about uh, uh, one of the very interesting things for us astronomers and people in general because Betelgeuse, we'll discuss, it's a star and uh, we are speculating that it might go supernova soon and we see it in our sky and if it goes supernova then it would be for humanity after 400 years we'll be seeing a star in our galaxy go supernova. So it's a very exciting event if this happens in our lifetime. So I'll dis discuss this. Okay, so this is the Orion constellation. This is how the Greek astronomers saw it and this is how we define it. So, but most, and it's a winter constellation. We see it in winters in the Northern Hemisphere in India and in Poland and all the countries in the Northern Hemisphere. This is how we see it, a very easily recognizable constellation. And it has mainly these seven prominent stars, and these have their names. And this guy, which is have a different color, bit orangish. And this is how it looks in winter, bit orange. This is, well, this is called Betelgeuse or Betelgeese. And maybe in Polish, uh, there is a different name for the stars. Yeah, so th these are the seven stars and, and this guy is red. And this is one of the clues, like uh, that, that's how we know that it might go explode soon. And we'll see why is it red and why rest of are not. And this is also a question, will it go <laughs> kaboom soon or not? Yeah, so let's find out. So the question is, then we have to go back to how stars, big, how stars begin and uh, how they come to be stars and what happens to them. So this is a very famous photo by the James Webb of the Kerry Nebula. Uh, it was all over social media a few months earlier after James Webb launched. It's a very beautiful photo. And what is show is this gas, these clouds of dust and gas, mainly hydrogen. And these bright spots, these are the stars forming in there. So how stars begins is like this, 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 there's a loss of hydrogen and this gas within a galaxy. It clumps together and this forms a star. This is how a star begins and in this state it's called nebula. This, this is called a nebula. And then this is a photo of sun by NASA. And from this, uh, the, when this gas and these clouds clumps together, and it, it, it gets a bit stabilized in this forms its sphere where hydrogen is turning into helium. It's called a star. This is photo of our sun. So what's happening in a star is this hydrogen. This is fusing together to form a helium. This is what's happening in the core of sun right now. And uh, how, and this gravity, uh, since it's a mass, it's holding the star together. And this nuclear fusion, it is trying to, because when hydrogen is fusing into helium, then energy is being released. And this is uh, a kind of opposing the gravity. This is how the star is stabilized at the moment. Our sun is stabilized. So what happens? So there's a question. What if all the hydrogen gets fused to make helium? Does it change anything? What happens next? And it, this current state of our sun or any star when hydrogen is turning into helium in its core is called main sequence star or in Taylor Swift main sequence era. So after that, it becomes what we call a red giant. Then first the hydrogen was turning into helium. The next helium fuses to make something, uh, a carbon. And whatever is next in, in the periodic table, if any of you remember, uh, if you remember, of course. Uh, and in the core, it continues to then helium start for forming carbon. And in the outer side, still there is a, a hydrogen left, and that hydrogen is converting into helium. Uh, but in the outer layers, the temperature is lower. And, and its color changes, then it is red. That is Betelgeuse right now, and what Betelgeuse is what we call a red giant star, or red supergiant. 
Yep, this is Betelgeuse's currently a red giant star. That's why we see it red. So look, then what happens next? What will happen next to our Betelgeuse or in Sun if it turns into a red supergiant? Mm, it depends. <laughs> yeah, so it depends what is the mass of that star. If it is less than eight times mass of our sun, like our own sun, obviously it's less than eight times its own mass. So then what happens is like in the core we have reached carbon, and uh, but there's not enough temperature in our sun then that carbon can fuse and make higher elements. So the, this opposition to gravity that was coming from the nuclear fusion it was uh, opposing the gravity that stops. So the, so the core, there is only things clumping together, so the core contracts. And uh, when the core contracts, all the material that was uh, he, he, keeping it together, whatever it is in between, proton, neutron, and electrons, they get tightly squeezed. Just like just like a balloon, like it's like something is, the gravity is tightly squeezing it together, but then there comes a point, you, you cannot squeeze the air any further. So the gravity that you cannot, same is in the sun, you cannot compress the electrons any further. It has a quantum mechanical origin, uh, this uh, specific thing in electrons, we call it Fermi Pauli's exclusion principle, that uh, no two electrons it can be packed this much together in very simple uh, terms. So then this co co contracted thing, this, uh, the star when it is very contracted, it becomes a white dwarf. And this is, this, this small dot, it is the white, actual photo of a white dwarf captured by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. So this will what happened to our sun. Now our sun is in its main sequence era, converting hydrogen into helium. And then it will become a red giant like this. And after that, it will become a lonely white dwarf. It, all its planets will be goes, gone. And we don't have to worry right now. It's not happening in our lifetime. It will take 6 billion years then it will become just this small dot kind of thing. Yeah. But there's a chance like this, this won't may, maybe, this is not the state of every white dwarf that nothing will happen to it. If suppose uh, a, there is a black hole nearby or, or there is a neutron star nearby or any other thing that can give it some of its matter, it's called in a being in a binary. Then, if, since it will uh, create some mass together, so the more mass means more gravity, so the gravity will increase. And then, that means more gravity means on that balloon, the balloon of our, this white dwarf, we have applied more pressure and then we reach a point which, of the mass which, which is called Chandrasekhar limit. It was done by an Indian American scientist, uh, named after Indian American scientist Chandrasekhar. So when the limit reach, this obviously the balloon then bursts if we apply too much force. And same thing happens with this white dwarf. If it accretes too much mass from a nearby binary object here, then it will go kaboom or explode. And this is how this explosion looks like. So it will explode and slowly this brightness will go down in time. And this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is what we call a uh, type one a supernova, and it is it is called standard candle. This is used to uh, measure uh, distances in the universe. It's a very important. This kind of supernova, observing them, is very important. And this is how a supernova remnant will look like after this white dwarf has exploded. This is how it will look like. So, but still we haven't talked about Betelgeuse. So, okay, so Betelgeuse is, has mass that is more than eight times of our sun. So, 
So when it's reached to the when uh, early here we had reached we had reached to forming carbon in its core. But here the mass is more and it has temperature that carbon can even go further. Carbon can fuse even further to make higher elements. Then carbon forces to make neon and neon goes to make to further and finally we reach iron. And uh, it's the same iron that is running in our veins in form of hemoglobin. It was formed in the core of some star out there. And uh, that's why Carl Sagan said we all are made of star stuff. Okay, but to f hi hi iron is the mo one of the most stable, uh, it's the most stable element in terms of binding energy. So to, 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 to make something out of iron, we need to give it energy, it, it requires energy. But there is nothing, uh, we ca uh, th there is no energy to do that in the s s uh, core of a star like this. So when it forms iron, then there is nothing to oppose gravity because iron, uh, the, the nuclear fusion stops. Iron cannot go into some, uh, ma go become something else and there will be energy. It, it requires energy. So again, we reach the same point, like there is nothing to oppose gravity and the co core collapse. And everything again becomes squeezed together. But this time, since the mass is more, the electrons are captured by proton and they become neutrons. The positive charge of electron, uh, the, the positive charge of a proton and negative of electron and they become neutral to form neutrons. And then comes a point due to uh, that neutrons cannot be even further, we, they cannot be tightly packed because of the nuclear forces at some point Although it is attractive, but at small, very smaller distance, they become repulsive. You cannot contract them any further. So, so these, all these things become too tightly packed and it becomes very dense and that's what we call a neutron star. And when this, uh, all in the core, everything is very tightly packed. And it, this happens if the mass of the core is small, that is three times the mass of our sun. And then, if the core is too tightly packed, it's, since everything was clumping together and suddenly it stops in the middle, then the mass that was falling towards the core from outside, it experiences a barrier, so it gets repulsed away. But the speed is too much, more than speed of sound, it experiences a shock wave. And then the core collapses. Let's see. This is how it should look like. This is what a core collapse supernova looks like. What is the time zone? Uh, how is, uh, like, I, I, it's, it's a visualization, I guess? Yes, it's a visualization. And, uh, how much it would take to, yeah, like, how long would be that boom? Okay. This, uh, this okay. So, uh, it will depend, uh, it, uh, yep, for, okay. Okay, I got your question. So it, it shouldn't last too long. It's same for every star. It, it doesn't depend because it's the same mass that makes this thing. It depends upon the mass of star, right? It should be in seconds. This boom should be in seconds uh, or even smaller than that because it's a shock wave. It doesn't take too much time, okay? And next, over the time, its luminosity starts decreasing. Yeah. And uh, it would take like the, uh, just the uh, explosion. Yes. Uh, would take me, uh, years. Uh, no, no, no. The, the explosion, the explosion should be. Uh, it it should have very small time. It uh -huh. it it shouldn't take the year. But for this to happen, like for, for the entire to reach at this point for a star, it might take it takes years. Okay. It takes decades to reach this point, but the explosion has a very small time stamp, I would say. I, I don't have the exact number. We'll see when Betelgeuse goes <laughs> with our own eyes. So yeah, this will what happened to Betelgeuse, and there was a recent paper which predicted that it might happen in four decades, and we'll get to see it in, with our own eyes. And if this happens, the explosion will look like this, 
if it's it, it's at night and uh, the it would be so bright that we would think if it's in a day that there are two suns for a brief second and it would uh, with time the luminosity of, of this explosion will start decreasing and uh, it looks like this this is photo of Cara crab nebula by hubble space telescope and this supernova remnant, it has gas and every material that that star formed, it is uh, scattered in the universe. And this again, this gas that is there and uh, everything gets mixed together and a new star forms. And this is how stars keep dying and then new stars keep taking birth in our universe. And the other case, that was the case when the, it becomes a neutron star. But in case the mass is of the core of that red supergiant is more than three times mass of our sun, then uh, it, the mass is too much that nothing can stop it contracting, uh, getting very compact. Like earlier there was this uh, nuclear repulsive forces which at one point it stopped and there was core collapse super, but in that case nothing happens. It gets too much clumped together, very competent, and they become a black hole. It's called a stellar black hole if a star makes a black hole. Yeah. So the uh, Fatima, the next talk, she'll discuss more about uh, black holes. So yeah, thank you.